Let us see a bit closely how acceptance um, is performed. And we're going to go through some of those um, reduction or acceptance diagrams or graphs that I showed you before. So let's say this is the, um, the automaton that we were looking at before. And we want to convince ourselves that the automaton works, the PDA works. So what we want to do is let's see how this automaton would accept the string AABB. So as an NFA, the, the intuition behind it is that the mechanics of a PDA is it works exactly like an NFA. So you start from the initial state. What do you do first? You do epsilon transitions. So if I do an epsilon transition, I can see that I can go until here, right? I can reach QA with epsilon without touching the, the input. I just need to be able to um, push dollar sign, which is always possible because here, I mean, I don't, I don't have any precondition. So from here, I cannot go back here because first it doesn't matter and it doesn't matter by, by this, I just want to know what are all the reachable states. So if I go back to self, I don't really care about it. And furthermore, it would consume an A, so that's not what we want. Now we're on epsilon. So we can also go here, right, because we just consume an epsilon. Can we go back to self? No, because of B. Can we go to QF? Let's see, QF. We can consume an F, epsilon, so that's fine. Um, what we have on the stack at this point, saying that we need to pop dollar sign, but if we reach it from here, then the dollar sign would be on the stack, which means we can also reach QF. So just by doing epsilon, all of these four states are reachable. Okay, so now the diagram is a bit different in that it now shows exactly what are the contents of the stack. Right? So here at this point, my stack is empty. At this point, my stack is a dollar sign. Here it's a dollar sign. And here, because I popped it, it becomes Q of F. And as you know, if I were to continue from here, then my stack would be empty. But if I were to continue from here, my stack would be um, Sorry, it would just have the dollar sign and here would be empty. So by this I mean um, the stack is, depends on which state you are from where you, you came from, right? So you could be in multiple um, states with the same name but with different stacks just because of how you reach there. Okay, so if we read A, let's see what we do. From Q in it, we cannot read A, so we don't care, so this is dead. From here, we can read A. Yes, we can. So that's going to be a good one. What about QB? Cannot read A. And QF also cannot read A. So none of these matter. The only one that matters is this one. We can read A. And where we go? We go to QA again. So here's an example where we have the same state but different stacks. Um, at this point, I want to read epsilon again, so if I read epsilon, I can go to QB, and then let's see if I can go to QF. If I go to QB, I leave my stack unchanged, which means I would have the same stack, dollar sign $A, and if I go to QF, then my stack would be not, the top would be A and not dollar sign, so I would not be able to reach QF. So the only place I can reach is uh, dollar sign is QA. So in this case, now I want to be able to read A, the second A. So if I do that, can I do it from QA? Yes. Can I do it from QB? No. So I'm going to have an outgoing edge from here. And this is now a dead edge, a dead state as well. This dead state and that state. So the only concurrent active state is QA, where I read dollar sign in two A's. So now what I want to do, I want to read epsilon, right? So epsilon would just give me to B. Would it go to QF? No, because the stack has an A on top and not a dollar sign. So now we have this. Now we have two enabled states, Q and A and Q and B. 
I want to be able to read B. From Q and A, I cannot read Bs, as you can see. But from QB, I can read Bs. But in order to read Bs, I need to check if I have A on top, which I do, so I can read a B. Now I'm on QB. Are there epsilons? Oh yes, there's this one. But this one requires me to have a dollar sign on top, which I don't have. So there are no epsilons. Let's see what we have next is Bs, right? So since there are no epsilons, Bs, I can go. Um, I can only go to self. So I have this one. Uh, and finally, M on B. What can I do? I can read simply um, after the B, I read epsilon again. So where do I go? I'm here on QB. If I read epsilon, I go to QF. Can I go? Yes, because I only have a dollar sign. So now my only active states are these two. Are any of these two a final state? Yes, Q of F is a final state, which means the string is accepted if I go up from Q init till QF. So now let's see if BB is accepted. And as you know, this diagram should be recognizing the language with the same number of A's and B's, so this should not be accepted. Let's see what happens. So the first thing we can do is an epsilon transition, right? So we can go here and we can go epsilon all the way. So now all of these are enabled. And then what we do, we read from here B, we cannot, from here B, we cannot. From here, can we read B? No, because my stack um, only has a dollar sign, so I cannot read B. And can I read uh, in QF, there's no outgoing address. So all of these are dead and BB is rejected. So now let's see the corner case where um, the number of Bs is the same as the number of Bs, which is zero. Um, so first thing we do, we start from initial state. As we've no seen already, all of these four are ena enabled after an epsilon step, which means uh, you get this. And is this an accepting state? Yes, because QF is reachable into a final state. It's reachable via, via epsilon transitions. 